up in the sky. It's a cloud. It's a plane. No, it's, it's birds. Thousands of them. Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy is brought to you by Heather's House of Feathers. Next time you need feathers, call Heather's House of Feathers. We've got lots of fresh feathers, frozen feathers, fluffy feathers, fuzzy feathers, fancy feathers, Thank you very much. Take two. Do you realize there are more different types of birds in the world than there are mammals, animals like you and me? See, birds come in all shapes and sizes. There's Big birds and little birds, and look, they're, they're, it's a. <laughs> of course, birds are a little better at it than we are. You see, we have a lot in common with birds. Hello. We're both warm blooded. That means we keep about the same body temperature all day. Also, we both have skeletons. We have a backbone, two legs, and two arms. Of course, we don't all have two arms. Some of us have two wings. And birds have something that we don't have. They have feathers. And bird feathers grow right out of a bird's skin, kind of like our hair. And they're made of a tough, natural protein, kind of like our fingernails. It's sort of a natural plastic. It's very lightweight and strong. Also, bird skeletons are hollow. That makes them very lightweight, very strong. Now, the combination of the lightweight, strong feathers and their hollow, strong skeletons make birds able to fly. And since birds can fly, they started living almost everywhere on Earth. Now, not all birds can fly, but all birds have feathers. A warm-blooded vertebrate with a covering of feathers. This is one of the classic definitions of a bird. What isn't generally realized, however, is that the light, fluffy feather of a bird is closely related to the scale of a reptile. How can birds fly if they don't have a motor? Well, please consider the following. Birds fly just like airplanes. Well, actually, airplanes fly just like birds. The key is you want to get the air moving over your wings fast enough to hold up your weight. First of all, this is shaped just like this. They're wings. The cross section of a bird's wing would look like this. We call this shape an airfoil. And here's how they work. As air molecules go around the wings, the molecules going over the top get spread out. And they don't push down as hard on top of the wing as the molecules going under the wing are pushing up. So that holds birds and planes up. The second thing is that birds are very lightweight. They have feathers that are light as feathers. And this is important. If you had to fly to school every day, you wouldn't want to be weighed down. 
and their bones are lightweight too. This is an eagle bone, and it's hollow. Now when something's hollow, it's very strong for how much it weighs. Now don't get me wrong, land animals like us have strong bones too, but they're much heavier than bird bones. And uh, our bones aren't hollow, but our airplanes are. Thirdly, birds and airplanes both have powerful engines. See, birds have very strong hearts, huge lungs, and powerful wing muscles that let them flap their wings. Birds burn energy about 20 times faster than land animals like you and me. Their whole body is a big propulsion system that lets them fly. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me on... <laughs> Consider the following. need feathers to fly, right? So try this. Take a feather off the ground and attach it to a piece of cardboard so that it hangs loosely like this. Blow some air going across the top of the feather. Check it out. See, a bird's feather is curved so that air moves more quickly going over the top than it does when it goes underneath. The difference in the speed of the air causes the feather to go up. That's lift. Lift lets birds fly. What would happen if you turn the feather over so that it's curved the other way? I don't know. Try it. The shape of the bird further helps it maintain flight. Its body is so built that it reduces wind resistance. Most birds live in homes they build themselves, called nests. It's where birds lay their eggs and raise their family. You've probably seen one. Now, most nests are made of leaves, twigs, mud, grass, things you find lying around. But other birds build their nests underground. It's just one more way that different birds adapt to living in different parts of the world. Now, some birds reuse their nests every year, like bald eagles. Scientists have found bald eagle nests over six meters deep and over 100 years old. It's like a mansion in the bird world. <laughs> It's not, uh, it's not just like a mansion. I mean, it's made of mud and leaves, but you know, you get the idea. Today on the Jackie Smash Show. Well, this Jackie is another exotic uh, bird. This is a duck. <laughs> no. Today on the Jackie Smash Show. Jackie, would you like to hold the bird? No, no. Oh, no, just give it a try. He's no, very no, no, gentle. No, 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 hold him, no, no. Oh, no, please. No, I don't want to hold him! Today on the Jackie Smash Show. Get him off me! Come on! No! Don't miss the wacky antics this week on Jackie Smash. This is a red-tailed hawk. Red-tailed hawk. She's got these big wings. See how the feathers spread apart? It gives her more lift. Now a bird like this is a bird of prey. It eats animals that live on the ground, and she can see them from two kilometers up in the air. She spots her prey, what she's gonna eat, then she comes screaming down on top of it. And hits it so hard at almost 200 kilometers an hour that she just knocks it out. <laughs> then she can uh, eat it. Usually turns it inside out and eats its insides. <laughs> it's a bird of prey. She eats animals. You're a nice bird of prey, though, right? I mean, you don't eat science, guys. <laughs> nice birdie. Nice birdie. Bit by bit, the chicks are fed gently, patiently. Daylight is ending. With darkness, the owl seeks its prey. Rodents, snakes, hawk chicklets. This is uh, Barney the barn owl. The barn owls eat rats. This is a barred owl, barred owl. Now, an animal like this will hunt uh, squirrels, squirrels and other rodents, rodents that live on the ground. This is a great horned owl. This is the only known enemy of skunks. I mean, you gotta be pretty serious about eating to attack a skunk. Barn owls are very quiet flyers. Helps them hunt. Hunt at night. At night. At night. As you can see really well in the dark. You can find them and catch them. <laughs> 
You go down and attack it. Owls can see infrared light. Infrared light, light that's just uh, heat. Light that's too low energy for our eyes to pick up. Great big eyes, great big dark eyes. They can see things on the ground at night that you and I can't even imagine seeing. Let me ask you something. Who are you looking at? because I got these. But birds don't need magnification. See, they got eight times as many light sensing cells in the back of their eyes as we humans do. That's how eagles and hawks can see things on the ground while they're hunting and flying very high in the sky. Birds also have their eyes set on the sides of their heads. And that allows them to see things in front of them and behind them at the same time. And their brains are set up to take in all this information at once, see? It's the Jackie Smiles Show. Jackie's guest today is Melinda McCready, the animal lady. Hi, welcome back. Our guest is Melinda McCready, the animal lady. And what kind of animal have you brought along today, Melinda? Well, Jackie, this is a parrot. A parrot? Yes, it's a bird. Oh, I know, it was, what is this, fur here, or hair? No, um, you can tell that it's a bird by its feathers, because oh. all birds have feathers. Oh, okay, yeah. I've, uh... The interesting thing about uh, parrots is that they have the attention span of a two-year-old and the intelligence of a five-year-old. Uh, does this, uh, the parrot do any kind of tricks or anything? Why, yes, they do. Would you like a cracker? And would I? Man, I'm starved. You know, I'm famished. I've been eating all day. Birds are the only animals with feathers, but humans are the only animals that have feather pillow fights. Usually, we associate birds with flying. But not all birds fly. Flippers help the penguin get about on land as well as underwater. The flippers make it possible for the penguin to virtually fly underwater. Penguins can't fly. They move best when they're in the water. For them, swimming is like flying. Penguin feathers are short, fluffy, and waterproof. They're not very good for flying, but they're perfect for being streamlined while swimming and keeping warm when you're in cold water. Penguins don't spend much time on land. So when they walk, they waddle or hop. They don't swing their wings very much. What? This is an emu egg. They're big. This is an emu. Emu chick. Emu chick hatching. Two emus. All birds have feathers, but not all birds can fly. This is an emu feather. They come from Australia. Now notice that all emu feathers uh, are two feathers on one quill. Now, a feather like this isn't too good for flying. See how far apart the little wispy veins are? But it's good for blocking out the sun. And it's also good in the rain. The water runs right off an emu's back. <laughs> the old saying goes. Anyway, emus don't fly because they don't need to. They run very fast. So if they're ever threatened, they're out of here. The time it takes for an egg to hatch ranges from 11 days to nearly three months, depending on the kind of bird. This is an ostrich egg. These ostrich eggs hatch in six weeks. These are ostrich feathers, and this 
is an ostrich. Uh, up there. See, it's a big bird. <laughs> it can be up to eight feet tall. The foot of the ostrich is almost hoof-like. This type of foot and its very elongated legs enable the ostrich to move easily over hard ground. We rescue, raise, and release all local uh, hummingbirds in the United States. They're one of the smallest birds in the world. The hummingbird is the smallest of all birds. This here is our male Anna's hummingbird, and he's our nanny. He's going to be the bird to teach all of our injured and orphaned babies how to be a bird. He'll teach them territorialism and correct vocalization and body posture, which we humans can't do. These are two young Annas that we rescued. Um, the mother was killed by a cat. And what I'm going to do is give them their first feeding. Uh, what we do basically is we try to imitate mom. We can only touch them on the head, and the heads come up, and mother would insert her bill. And then she'll deposit her food into their little crop. You see that bubble in the throat? That's their crop. That's where they keep their food. They're fed every 25 minutes from dawn until dusk. A hummingbird feeds as often as 50 times a day, and the need for food is continuous. Birds have found ways to live all over the world. Now, one of the ways they do it is by migrating. Birds usually migrate during the cold winter months when there's less food available, and it's tougher to live in freezing temperatures. So many birds migrate. They take off and live someplace warmer for a while. They fly south or whatever. Bye, Mr. Bly. The spring migration is underway. Within a few short months, nearly one-third of the bird species on Earth will be on the move. Birds can find their way around on the Earth. They can navigate. They use landmarks on the ground and the position of the sun in the sky. And some birds, like these homing pigeons, actually have something like a magnetic compass in their heads. They can sense which way they're going with the Earth's magnetic field. They can feel it in their brain. Isn't that wild? So if we take them far from home and release them, they can find their way back. Them. It's hard to win, though. I mean, they're, they're homing pigeons. They're going almost a straight line. We, we have to follow roads. Yeah. They, they can find their way. They, they can use their sense of smell, you know? You can have a compass in your car. You can have a map. But it's not nearly as sophisticated as whatever a homing pigeon's got up here. Surprised I beat them. They got a tailwind. They should be here any any time. Mm. No. Are they coming? Oh, there, there they are. Look. Aren't they cool? They're homing pigeons. They're cool. I mean, uh, they're cool. cool. You can make a bird feeder out of a bottle. All you need to do is take a wire coat hanger and cut it here, here, and here. You might need an adult to help you. It'll look like this when you're done. Now you need to poke some holes in the bottle. Put five in the side and five in the bottom. Now push the wires through the holes so that it forms an X, like this. Now take the loop part of the hanger and push it through the holes in the bottom. That'll be your hanger. Now bend the end so that it doesn't come out. This is getting complicated. Now use a funnel and fill it with bird seed. Now put the lid on. Take an aluminum pie plate and put it underneath your feeder. Use the wires to poke holes in it. Will I need a permit to do this? Mm -hmm. 
Now bend the ends of the wire so that it holds the plate. This is only a half hour show, lady. Now you're ready to fly. Hang your feeder outside and wait for some birds to come. Don't forget to take your cap off before you use it, because otherwise, yeah, no, it won't work. That sounds poisonous. And we'd like to thank our guest again, Melinda McCready, the animal lady. Thanks for being with us. I'm Jackie Smash. So long. Whatever happened to that bird you had around here anyway? All the other ones are accounted for. I don't see that one anywhere. On my head. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. On my head. But is that some kind of a lingo you bird people use? <laughs> get them off. Get them off me, would you? Get them. Just get them off me. Get them off me! Come on! Move it!